No music tonight. I was going to sing tonight, but that's all right. Thank you, Bobby. Um, it's uh, great to be here with uh, Michael and family. It's uh, Michael West. I heard uh, Michael's speech. Actually, I was inspired by his rendition, so I was hoping to do a little thing here. Nonetheless, it's great to be here and to associate myself with this effort of, on the part of the Democratic Labour Party to bring the truth to the people. Now, the Barbados Labour Party decided to bring their ragtag show in the vicinity of the constituency I represent, St. Michael South Central, last Sunday. It was right on the border of St. Michael South and St. Michael South Central. And it was an interesting, um, you know, event, of course. Lots of cars, they trucked in their people as usual. Not many people, but a lot of cars, a lot of bees from all over the place. And they had a good time. It actually probably helped the Prime Minister because they called the word Flandel more times than anything else for the whole night. They spoke about the current Minister of Tourism as well, a former Minister of Tourism is talking about a current Minister of Tourism and decided to question the work that this party has done in tourism. And I just wanted to say something on that. Because we have done a number of very, very, very good things and I think that this government can be proud of the work it has done in tourism. And Barbados now has a tourism minister that is focusing on the long view. We're doing visionary things. Teaming up with the BHTA for the student tourism education program, as well as the tourism tools for the workers. We have a white paper on tourism that outlines government's policy that is giving way to a master plan. We are being visionary in our work in terms of sourcing new markets in Latin America and Scandinavia and doubling capacity on places like Germany. New airlift from Canada, good to see the High Commissioner uh, Graves here. New airlift from New York in the form of JetBlue. We are doing a number of good initiatives. We no longer have a tourism minister who simply always talks about himself. I this and I that. We have a tourism minister that is a little more comfortable, as I was doing this morning with taxi drivers and workers in this sector, than being on the golf course. I don't own a set of golf clubs. You also have a minister of tourism as well, that is not consorting with transvestites down by the library at night. Spectrum. So let the word go forward from here. Because that's just a sneak preview. Okay? You heard Donville. We opening the face of the back after Christmas. And I can tell you something. I got so much warm lashes with them, man. My mouth watering, man. Listen, double boy, we can rinse them out here, boy. Licks galore, man. Incredible. All that we have done in cruise, all that we have done to put people at the center of that industry. No longer is it only about restauranters and hoteliers. There is a role for the farmers. There's a role for community tourism. There's a role there's a role for everyone in the Democratic Labour Party's vision of how this industry should be run. And we're not leaving it there. We are thinking ahead. I was very glad that Speaker Carrington mentioned the international business sector earlier. Because you see, 
how we look at it. There are other services that tourism can be at the core of. The international business sector and tourism have natural synergies. And so we want to develop more opportunities for our young people. Not only careers in hospitality, but careers in international business. And, 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 and when I say that the future of Barbados is services, we are talking about the full gamut. Entrepreneurial services, yes. International business services, yes. Agricultural opportunities and the post-harvest technologies, food processing, yes. And also something near and dear to the heart of our Prime Minister, but of course key in terms of this government's future outlook on this country, and that is the, 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 the green economy and the energy sector. That is about making Barbados more energy independent by relying more on our locally produced natural gas, by uh, solar farms, wind technology, converting waste to energy. Th this is where this government's head is at. At the time of a crisis where we are just holding the ship of state steady, we have already started to think about the new axes of development for Barbados going forward. And that, again, is a progressive government at work. There is no need for you to even entertain the alternative at this stage. Minister of Finance and myself were talking in Parliament after he made a speech. We were talking about the Labour Party, how desperate they are to get their hands on the reins of power. But it ain't really Bay Street they want. They study in the top of Broad Street, that building in there, driving past there and peeping through the, uh, the, uh, the windows, dribbling and singing O Beulah, sweet line of corn and wine, <laughs> looking to get their paws on the treasury. And we cannot afford that this point. That is what put us in this crisis already. Had Barbados been restructuring and doing all of those things we were talking about when we were in opposition, I remember Dennis Kelman talking till he was hoarse, and you know he sounds hoarse normally, so you would understand. Talking till he was hoarse, trying to explain to them you need to restructure, punish consumption and encourage production. How are you think of me? The Kelvinics 101. No? But the point is, we should not be in this state. But we found ourselves in this state. And we have given them an opportunity to present an alternative. We waited for bit with bated breath. And finally, after four and a half the leader of the opposition, the former Prime Minister, goes to his party conference after much thought and presents a 15-point plan. You remember the 15-point plan? I, I, I had to write it out. The things that he promised. You return me back to 15%. Cut land tax. Cut income tax. Restore all the allowances, the tax-free allowances, a tax credit for medical insurance uh, holders, a tax credit for approved education savings plans. All of that he's promising. Promising everything precisely. Where is the money going to come? You hear that list? Well, he, he made Mitt Romney sound like Ebenezer Scrooge, man. Well, he promised, well, he promised everything to get a little problem. To get, to get power. The, 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 fact, the fact can't be denied that in order to yield all of that revenue, you have to cut some expenditure. And you know, 
this is basic accounting, George. If we spend about 900 or just under $900 on wages and salaries, 900 million, sorry. We spend about the same thing in debt service. Most of it, of course, is interest, uh, 500 and some odd interest, and the rest would be the amortization. And then you're spending $600 million in transfers to the, uh, and, and subsidies to the, to the public institutions. How are you going to finance your shopping list of promises? You can't do anything with debt service. You have to either cut the wages or you have to cut the transfers to the public sector institutions. And you see, that is the real source of that privatization debate. The only way they can even come close to meeting half of these promises is by either cutting wages and salaries or by privatization or some combination of the two. We have to hang that noose around his neck and make him wear it. And we have to punish him with his own words. The words that he said, and I have it here too, from the leader of the opposition in July, after he had spoken to the Chamber of Commerce. He just, he just left Jamas Lane, yes. Another solution is for government to make greater use of public-private sector partnerships where the private sector takes on greater responsibility in the island, including taking over some of the responsibilities that have been historically done by government. That is not any divestment, anything. That is privatization, straight up. That is what the Barbados Labour Party is promising. And these are only the only not the promises. We haven't financed Mia Motley's yet because she got her own separate list of promises now. Heading with a, a $500 million um, um, injection to tourism and then a, a subsidy to the um, to the to, to, to the like and power company to, to fuel oil something that somebody scribbled on the back of an envelope and hand to her and she thinks it can work another couple hundred million dollars on top of that so always promises alone can run us probably what close to a billion and then her promise is probably another three quarters of a billion where is all of these, this money going to come from the finances? So, so let us be very clear in terms of the choice that we have in the next election. We really only have one choice. What we are hearing from the Barbados Labour Party does not make any sense. It cannot make any sense. And therefore, we must continue with the Democratic Labour Party that is managing the fiscal affairs and indeed the overall affairs of this country with a bloom. Think for a minute that even though we have had to reduce the fiscal deficit, that we've still been able to put clever interventions where needed. For example, the $20 million Smart Energy Fund, the $25 million uh, Tourism Industry Relief Fund, because we realize that you need to intervene in a very surgical manner. You don't have a lot of money, but you have to target areas. And that is what we are doing. It also explains why we also look on the social side. We looked on the social side with respect to trying to uh, invest in our people in a number of, uh, you know, creative ways. You know, when the Barbados Labour Party was pressured to identify where they could save money, you know one of the things they identified? Feeding the children in the summer camps. Don't feed them. Children only want water to run around in. That is what they said publicly. 
So, they, you know, they, they, they don't want to put nothing in the constituency councils. Nothing in the, uh, the, the football tournament, the David Thompson Memorial Classic, a wonderful tournament. Come out and watch the Michael South Central win it shortly. Uh, anyway, that's another ad, free ad. But, but, but they don't want to do, 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 see us do that. But we, we have decided that, that, that these, are, these are important elements of the whole process of government. It's, it is important that we recognize that Barbados' talent, uh, Barbados' best resource is talent, and that is its people. And that is why we must pause, and as, a, as excited as we are about developing our economic sectors, we are also equally as excited as what we can do to develop socially and we continue to do that. It is important that we make this country a wonderful place to live. And that is what the Democratic Labour Party is about. Make this country a nice place to live and you want to know something? People will want to visit, people will want to do business, people will want to invest. But it must start with all of us in here and making this country a nice place to live. And it explains why we work so hard, even in these difficult times, to construct the great society that you hear us talking about. I want to encourage you to stand by this government, continue to support us, and yes, continue to pray for us as we do the wonderful work for the people of Barbados in these very straightened circumstances. Thank you very much. Vote for Michael Gannon and St. Michael West. Support the St. Michael team. Support the Democratic Labour Party. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.